In my videos, I often talk about the importance of getting your mineral levels checked correctly. So in this video, I want to explain my favorite method of doing this, which is with a hair analysis. I will walk you through the process of getting one step by step and also share my favorite labs that I always work with. But before we do that, let's talk about why to get a hair analysis instead of a normal blood test, which can be very misleading. The reason for this is that blood is homeostatic, meaning it will always work to return itself to a normal range. That's because blood is the most important transport medium for the body. It's pretty much always prioritized over tissue, because it transports oxygen, so it needs to flow efficiently to reach all the organs in your body. So when an important mineral is low in the blood, your body will simply pull more of that mineral into the blood from the surrounding tissue. Our body does this to keep everything running for as long as possible. But this also means that you can be deficient in a nutrient in the tissue without it showing up in the blood. In fact, for minerals such as potassium that are essential for survival, your blood will be the last place to show a deficiency because if levels drop too low, you die. Another thing to keep in mind is that minerals are not stored in large amounts in the blood. For example, of all the magnesium you have in your body, less than 1% can be found flowing through your veins. How can you expect to get a good understanding of your mineral levels if you test the substance that contains less than 1 one-hundredth of your body's total reserves? You can't. And it also doesn't matter how accurate your testing methods are, because your sample is simply not representative of the bigger organism. What this means is that we need to use a test that is more representative of what's going on in the body, specifically the tissue. This is where a hair analysis comes into play. As the name suggests, for a mineral hair analysis, sometimes also called HTMA for hair tissue mineral analysis, you test a hair sample, which is then burned, after which the remaining minerals are analyzed. Unlike blood levels, which show what's circulating in your veins at that very moment, a hair analysis is less easily influenced by daily fluctuations and instead gives you the average mineral levels of around the last two to three months, depending on the hair length that you send in. Okay, now that you know the benefits of hair analysis, how do you get one? First, let's talk about the best labs for this. To be honest, I can really only recommend two laboratories. One is called Analytics Research Labs, or ARL, and the other is called Trace Elements Labs, or TEL. Both have been active since the 1980s and have a database of several hundred thousand tests that they can compare your data to. What really sets them apart from other labs, however, is their handling of the hair sample before analysis. You see, most labs will wash your hair before analysis to eliminate contaminants. This throws off the sodium and potassium values, however, so the sample isn't as reliable anymore. Also, most other labs don't actually specialize in measuring the mineral content of your hair, but instead will focus on the presence of toxic metals, such as mercury or arsenic, or the presence of illegal substances. This is not what we're interested in, so please only use ARL or TEL when getting a mineral hair analysis. Just as a side note, both labs usually don't accept direct orders. Instead, you need to go through a practitioner who will place the order for you. But don't worry, I will link a list of recommended practitioners in the resource section. They will also help you interpret the test, which can be quite difficult for a beginner. Now on to cutting the hair sample. Doing this correctly is extremely important and cannot be overemphasized. Please take the following guidelines to heart. As for washing, wash your hair between 4 and 20 hours prior to taking the sample. Please avoid head and shoulders and sell some blue shampoos, as they are known to affect some readings, especially zinc. Instead, either wash your hair just with water or a natural slash organic shampoo. Also, avoid heavy sweating activities between washing and cutting. As for hair type, Please use scalp hair as it is the most reliable source for analysis. Pubic and other body hair should only be used as a last resort if scalp hair is not available. 
In terms of hair preparation, the portion of hair that will be sent in should be untreated, so not permed, dyed, or bleached. If all of the hair has been chemically treated, wait until enough new hair has grown. The hair should also be free of any type of gels, oils, or hair creams. If you work around external contaminants, for example, if you're a welder or work in a mine, make sure to limit your exposure between your last shower and the collection of the hair. For hair location, the best location is the nape of the neck. That's because this part of your hair usually has the least contact with gels, creams, and other treatments. Also, make sure to collect the sample in small portions from at least four to five different locations of the nape of the neck. You generally want the hair to be between an inch to an inch and a half maximum. So between two and a half and three and a half centimeters. For most people, this length reflects two to three months of hair growth, which is ideal for mineral analysis. Please cut as close as possible to the scalp, and if the sample is longer than an inch and a half, cut off the rest at the tip of the hair, not the root. Also, when cutting the sample, please use ceramic or stainless steel scissors. For example, I got these ceramic scissors for $4 of Amazon. Never use copper scissors, which will throw off the copper value, which is one of the most important readings in the analysis. The weight needed for analysis is at least 125 milligrams. But don't worry, you don't need to buy a new scale for this. Instead, use the paper scale that both TL and ARL will send you. If for whatever reason the weight scale is not available, 125 milligrams of hair is around one full teaspoon. Lastly, after cutting the sample, please put the hair directly into the small envelope that was sent to you from the lab. Do not use plastic bags or any type of foil, staples, paper clips, or tape. All of them can throw off the values. Once this is done, you can put the sample together with your order form into an envelope and send it either directly to the lab or first to your practitioner, depending on what you arrange with them. One more thing, if you regularly take baths with magnesium sulfate, also known as Epsom salts, please tell this to your practitioner. Chances are some of the magnesium water got into your hair, which can artificially elevate the magnesium value. And that's really it. You should get the results within one or two weeks, and they will look something like this. Even though both labs will send you a text that somewhat interprets the results, please don't rely on this text only. It is computer generated and can be difficult to understand. Instead, always work with one of the recommended practitioners and let them explain the results to you. As you will see, it's not as easy as supplementing the minerals that are low on your test and avoiding those that are high. Now, before I end this video, I should go over some of the criticisms that you will sometimes hear when discussing hair analysis. This is a controversial topic, especially because blood tests have been the go-to test for such a long time. So anyone coming along and offering an alternative will, at least at first, be looked at with skepticism. The first critique of hair analysis is that hair tissue is not a reliable way of measuring minerals. This critique is based on a 2001 study by Seidel et al. called Assessment of Commercial Laboratories Performing Hair Analysis. In it, it was concluded that most labs don't deliver reliable results. Unfortunately, this study was highly flawed because among other mistakes, it did not distinguish between labs with different procedures. Like I said before, most labs specialize in the detection of toxins and only do mineral analysis on the side. They always wash their hair sample before analysis, not realizing that this completely throws off certain minerals, making the sample useless. Interestingly, the two labs that I recommend were also featured in the 2001 study and their results were extremely close to each other, with six of the 10 essential nutrients being identical and the other four being so close that it was well within the standard error of measurement. This actually validates their testing methods. A second common critique of hair analysis is that the results you get from the lab are confusing or even misleading. This is actually true. Like I said a minute ago, you cannot simply look at the test results and supplement the minerals that are low 
and avoid those that are high. This strategy is called replacement therapy and it doesn't work. Why? Because our body is a lot more complex than many people think. Let me give you an example. In many of my videos, I talk about how common magnesium deficiency is. At the same time, most people will get a high magnesium value on their hair analysis. How is this possible? Well, what you have to realize is that a hair analysis shows us which minerals are excreted by the body through the hair. A high magnesium value is often an indicator of an overall magnesium loss because the body is actively pushing it out through the hair. You will only be able to correctly interpret this if you are familiar with the different hair analysis patterns and also know the patient's current lifestyle and symptoms. That's why it's so important to work with an experienced practitioner who knows what they're doing.